there's two tests that we do uh, to determine the plastic and the liquid limit. We will start with the plastic limit. The plastic limit is the state of uh, moisture in a soil that separates uh, plastic behavior from solid behavior. So the soil uh, will start behaving as a plastic material. And it's simply a water content. But it's a water content that the soil behaves in such a way that it can be rolled in a surface like this to form a thread. It's very wet. Uh, you will find out that the thread can easily be longer than an inch. If the soil is too dry, uh, it will crumble before uh, it reaches the one inch in length. In this case, we, we're, we're slightly, slightly on the wet side, so that we're able to actually achieve um, a length exceeding the inch. And the diameter of this thread is one eighth of an inch, of, or approximately three millimeters in uh, diameter. So, uh, if the material is too wet, like I said, we manipulate it to dry it uh, a little more, or mix it with uh, drier material. Uh, if the material is too dry, we will be mixing it with water to bring it to the right consistency. Once we achieve the right consistency, the procedure is just determining that moisture content. And for that purpose, we use the water content determination equipment. Um, it's a scale capable of reading to the one hundredth of a gram. Uh, we tear it to zero, and we weigh the dish, recording that weight. Okay, so that would be the weight of the dish or cup. And to that, uh, we would add the material that we're interested in determining the water content. So when we add it, uh, get a representative sample. This would be the wet soil plus dish having a weight that is recorded. The next step, uh, normally you may uh, have enough sample to do a couple of these determinations so that you can average them. And this goes into the oven. So again, we bring the material which has been dried overnight. Um, and this time the weight that has been recorded is the weight of the dish plus the dry soil. Um, these numbers get recorded and go into calculation spreadsheet that allow us to measure the moisture content. The plastic limit then is the average water content in the condition where we were able to roll the material to a one inch, one eighth of an inch thread for a length of one inch without crumbling. Now we're uh, going to proceed with the liquid limit. Uh, which is the state of water content that separates liquid from plastic behavior. So to make the soil behave as a liquid, we need to mix it up with a lot of water. Uh, we take the material, like we were working before, and we add water to it. And this process is going to take a little bit of time because you want to mix it. And it's very important that it's uniform, that you don't have dry chunks with uh, uh, moist material surrounding it. So it will take you a little time to reach that consistency. Characteristics of the equipment. Um, it's basically a brass cap where we're going to place the material here and then we're going to cut a groove and then we're going to drop this at a right revolutions per second and we're going to count the number of revolutions that it takes for that gap to close. Now when we're doing that, if you notice what happens here, the cap lifts and the amount that is lifted is standardized. It should be one centimeter and to calibrate the cap you can ensure that this is set up to the right standard which is one centimeter. If needed, that can be adjusted. Okay, so this um, uh, adjustment screw serves that purpose. 
the idea here is to spread the material onto the cap. Try not to leave any air pockets inside it. You got that one? So we have uh, cut a groove and we can see through the chin on the metal. Uh, the idea here is we're going to zero uh, the counter and we're going to start counting the number of revolutions that it takes for that gap to close for a distance of half an inch. So the procedure is to turn it two revolutions per second approximately steady and the counter is going to take care of the numbers. So here we go. We're starting to see the gap closing right there. We have closed the gap by about half an inch and that's the distance I'm talking about where the bottom of that groove has closed. So this would be exactly 10 counts for that moisture content. We have prepared a set of samples at different water contents, so if the material was in a drier stage and we did the same procedure, instead of taking 10 counts, we have taken more. Um, the goal is to identify the water content for which it takes exactly 25 counts to close a gap by half an inch. Now, because it's not possible to be exactly at 25, we're going to use this number at 10, then we're going to use drier material to get somewhere maybe close to 20, another point above 25, and typically uh, you will determine that from the intersection with the line of 25. We're going to show that in a spreadsheet. But you need normally uh, three points that bracket, a couple of them bracketing the 25 points.